guys, welcome to Lucy's channel, Lucy Lena, Queen of Belmain. Today, we're gonna to talk about five things to know before getting a female German Shepherd. So before we get started in five things to know before getting a female German Shepherd, I just wanna disclose, I'm not a dog expert, dog trainer, dog behaviorist in any way, shape or form. I am an enthusiast and crazy dog dad who loves taking photos and video of his pup. But what I do also wanna disclose is that this is just from my own experience bringing up Lucy in the last two and a half years. Lucy is two and a half year old West German show line, but she does have a decent amount of prey drive about her. She's very active and I just wanna share with you the characteristic traits that she has. And the first one is weight and size. Generally, a female German Shepherd is going to be a little bit smaller than their male German Shepherd counterparts. Now, male German Shepherds are around 60 to 65 centimeters from the shoulder and weigh around 30 to 40 kilos. And a female German Shepherd is around about 55 to 60 centimeters from the shoulder and they can weigh anywhere from about 22 to 30 kilograms. Now, this is generally speaking. Now, from our experience, Lucy is a little bit more than the average female. So Lucy's a little bit larger than the average female. She weighs in at around 34 kilograms now, and that is kept very lean. Here is a photo here, just so you know she's not fat. Now, Lucy is around about 63 centimeters from the, sh from the shoulder. I'm, I'm not sure what that is in inches, I'm sure you can figure it out. But generally speaking, Lucy is a bit larger than the average female. She's probably more the same size as like an average male German Shepherd. Now, another great factor of a female German Shepherd's essentially being a little bit smaller than their male German Shepherd counterparts is they can actually be a little bit better and more natural at agility dog sports. So this is kind of what you're looking at to, to do with your dog one day. Maybe a female German Shepherd might be the better choice. Alrighty, number two is female German Shepherds are easier to train than male German Shepherds. So I've never owned a male German Shepherd, so I can't directly compare, but from what I know around, from just understanding German Shepherds, owning a female German Shepherd and being quite active in a regular German Shepherd community here in Sydney, I feel that female German Shepherds tend to mature a little bit earlier than male German Shepherds. So this can just help with uh, obviously obedience training. And male German Shepherds can be probably a little bit more stubborn than female German Shepherds. Now, this isn't set in concrete because it's your, your, your female German Shepherd could have completely different characteristics to Lucy or whatnot. But I found with Lucy, she was very willing to learn, eager to learn, eager to please. So training her wasn't too hard at all. And we did realize and notice that with some of our friends who have who got a male German Shepherd around the same time that we got Lucy, we did see the difference in how fast Lucy was picking up information and learning new things comparative to this male German Shepherd. Now, again, it could be a whole lot of different factors involved in that as well. I think I may have been in a position to train Lucy more and spend a bit more time, whereas these other people probably didn't have the same time that I had. But still, it was quite a noticeable difference and this is the best comparison that I can do not owning a male German Shepherd. But I think in general, I think the community can relate that a female German Shepherd is easier to train. All right, so number, oh, Lucy, oh, you've been a bloody great girl, mate. You've been a good girl. Here, yes. good job. And a, and a cushion of schnotty, Mwah. nice work. Number three are heat cycles. Now, if you're gonna get a female German Shepherd, you're most likely going to encounter a heat cycle at some point before you get them de-sexed, if that's your plan. So, German, female German Shepherds generally start having their heat cycles at around six months, potentially a little bit older, depending on what, you know, every dog is different, and they can last them around two to four weeks. And you possibly can get two heat cycles a year for a female German Shepherd, but this could differ between different types of dogs, but this is just kind of generally speaking. We actually missed out on Lucy's first heat cycle because we got her de-sexed at around the seven month old age bracket. Um, and depending on who you talk to and who you speak to, is you're probably going to get a different opinion on when you should get your dog, your female German Shepherd de-sexed. Some veterinarians say six months, others say 12 months, other specialists and people say 18 months, 
and you've got a whole bandwagon of people who say two years or don't get your dog de-sexed. So I don't know what the right or wrong thing to do. Some people say if you get your German Shepherd, your female German Shepherd de-sexed too early at around the six month um, bracket and try to miss that first heat cycle, that they could potentially be more prone to cancer. I'm not sure if this is actually proven in case studies or not. And you can actually stunt your German Shepherd's growth. Like I can definitely vouch for the second that is potentially incorrect because Lucy is actually on the larger size for a female, if not heading towards more the average male size German Shepherd. So there's definitely no growth stunts there. Now I have heard a bit of information about the whole cancer thing, but again, I'm not sure if like how accurate that is, and it's possibly something that you're gonna have to look at and make that decision for your own dog. At the time when we got Lucy D6, we weren't aware of it and the vet wasn't uh, faced with this possibility at all. So we just went with the recommendation that was best for us. Now, if you're not gonna get your female German Shepherd d sex, that's perfectly okay. There's no right or wrong thing to do. Just be aware though, once they're in their heat cycles, that these dogs will do anything to get the doggy D. And by the doggy D, I mean mate. So it's kind of this crazy animalistic urge that nature, you know, they, when, they, when they want a mate, they will do everything in their power. Your six foot high fence, eight foot high fence, probably won't keep your German Shepherd in the backyard. So your female German Shepherd potentially needs to be kept inside at all times and you should definitely have extra precautions and measurements around her keeping when she's in her heat cycles for other dogs trying to get in and your dog trying to get out. You don't want accidental litters. And also you be aware that they can have some bloody discharge come out of their little downstairs. Oh, Luce, hey darling. <laughs> Lucy didn't have that problem though, but I know with female German Shepherds, you can put these little nappies on them that are specifically made for dogs and that can help kind of keep the house clean. So again, there's something else that you have to decide whether you did your dog desex or not, or at what time period, but just be aware, heat cycles. Number four, lifespan. Female German Shepherds are going to outlive male German Shepherds. So if you want a dog that's gonna hang around a bit longer, probably get a female. So, no, this isn't the case, but there is a study that was released by the Royal Veterinary College in the UK that did a study to say that female German Shepherds tend to live on average 11.1 years, whereas male German Shepherds tend to live 9.7 years. So if this is a big factor for you, maybe for more longevity or maybe a better chance at a longer life with a dog, maybe a female German Shepherd could be the right pick. But this is just from a study. So just to throw a little spanner in the works with that, when we were going to pick up Lucy, we got the privilege of meeting her grandfather or her great grandfather who happened to be nearly 15 years old and he was in exceptional shape and he had no hip dysplasia. He was, he was in immaculate condition. He actually looked like he was eight, like he looked amazing. So. Look, this again is statistically speaking, a lot of factors come up to the longevity of your German Shepherd, as we all know, health, nutrition, everything. God, the exercise, genetics, all these factors are gonna play a big part. So this study was just to say, statistically speaking, that females tend to live a little bit longer than males. Okay, and the fifth thing to know before getting a female German Shepherd is female German Shepherds don't tend to be a one-man dog as potentially most male German Shepherds will tend to, to look towards one person. That's specifically who does their training and feeds them and things like that. Now, with female German Shepherds, and this is directly from owning Lucy, Lucy's very smart. She's very 50-50 when it comes to my wife and I. Lucy's got everything figured out. So, Lucy understands that in the morning, she's very affectionate towards me because I do her training in the morning and we, I do most of her exercise and fun curricular activities in the AM. Whereas in the afternoons when I'm at work, Lu Ma, uh, Felicity, my wife, feeds Lucy and generally spends the evening with Lucy laying on the bed and, and doing their thing. So Lucy's very loving and very affectionate towards mum in the evenings. Whereas where I do the training in the morning, Lucy's more affectionate and loving towards me in the morning. So it's very 50-50. The last thing I wanted to share with you guys today is something extremely awesome that we got just recently called Yolo Pup, who specialize in dog training toys. 
So these are some of the toys that I've used a lot in the past, things like tugs and bite balls and stuff, especially tugs. Now this is Lucy's kryptonite and my most favorite training aid for when I'm doing obedience work with Lucy. Let's jump out of the way there, Lucy. Now how beautiful is this? This is like what you'd expect from Apple. This is Apple packaging. How good is that? Look at this. Welcome to the pack, Yolo Pup. If you do it right, once is enough. Boom! That is fantastic. Guys, I'm gonna link everything below with uh, where you can find the stuff here. But there's two specific things I really, really wanna talk about. And that are these tugs. Tugs are freaking amazing training tools. This is one of the main things that I use with Lucy in all the time. And you'll see me pull out tugs in all the other videos, but they're not as durable as this tug here, especially. This is bloody leather and these handles are awesome. Tugs in the past that I've used have the tiniest little handles. Man, I have, I have big hands. I've got man hands, all right? I need a big hands for a big tug. So let's get into it. The first reason why this tug's so awesome is it keeps the attention on you. So if your dog is a little bit reactive towards other things, you can divert their attention and play utilizing this tug. The second reason why using a tug is so good, it is bloody good exercise for you and your pup. Because when you've got a 34 kilo German Shepherd swinging off the end of it, it's a bloody good arm workout. Another cool concept is of a tug is dogs naturally want to bite. And this actually helps satisfy that natural urge and tendency to want to bite things. So you can redirect that onto this tug. But don't be an idiot and hold it here like I once did because your dog may accidentally bite your hand. That's why we got these awesome, extra thick handles for you to grab on. Another great reason to utilize one of these tugs and why they're so appealing for the pup is because it's a great way to teach the dog to release, to out or to drop the tug onto the ground. And then if your dog is clicker trained, you can then mark that behavior and then reward them again with another game of playing tug. Now, if your dog's having a hard time releasing this tug, this is where you play the two tug game. And what's better than one of something is when you get two of something. This is the Poochie tug. It, you may recognize it as of probably your wife or girlfriend's handbag or your own hand or manned bag that you own. So this Poochie tug will help you get this tug back. And here's why. So if you can't get the tug off your dog or you haven't quite mastered the drop down, out, whatever it is you wanna mark that command with, you can then pull out your specific Poochie tug, which is even bigger and more appealing. And then you can get the attention of this. They're gonna to have to out that one naturally and then you can really utilize this tug. So guys, if you would love to get your hands on high quality tugs, and these are going to be our go-to moving forward, make sure you jump over onto Yolo Pup. All their deets are gonna be down in the description below and pick up your Yolo Pup tugs. Be quick, because this bad boy here, the Poochie tug, these are flying out of the goddamn door. Just remember guys as well, this isn't a toy that you just, oh cool, got it, throw it in the backyard and let the dog go nuts. This is a training tool. This is to utilize, to build the bond and to reward your dog. So I think the best practices with these, don't leave this, these toys laying around the house when you're not utilizing them for training and maybe pick up toys that kind of resemble a tug. Don't give that to your dog if you want to utilize it and, and, and get the most out of it as a training aid. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you tune into next video, which will be released in the next up and coming few days, is I'm gonna be doing five things to know before getting a West Showline German Shepherd, and that is exactly what Lucy is. So guys, if you wanna tune into that, please make sure, hit the subscribe, hit that notification bell, don't miss it, and we'll see you in the next video.